Hey there everyone, this is a video to help you try to figure out the basics of your calculator. I'm doing this with quantitative skills and reasoning course Math 1001 in mind, but for many of you guys, um, you need to know this for whatever math class you're taking. Um, I will not be dealing with graphing. I will only be dealing with entering numbers and calculations into your calculator. And if you have a non-graphing calculator, like just a regular scientific calculator, the keystrokes will be the same. All right. But I use a cal graphing calculator because I have that um, embedded into my laptop and also because you can see all of the strokes together. Okay. So anyway, so we're just going to work through a couple problems here. I've got some simple calculations lined up here. And what I want you to do is I want you to use the calculator completely. I do not want you to use um, try to simplify any of these on your own. Um, yes, you should know PEMDAS. You should know, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, or please embalm my dead Aunt Chiniqua, which was something my students came up with a few years ago, or whatever else that helps you remember PEMDAS. But um, basically, you just need to use your calculator. But your calculator works with PEMDAS, which means if you don't type it in exactly correctly, it will make a mistake. So um, let me show you. We're starting off with the absolute value of 2 minus 5 plus 3 times negative 4. Um, absolute value on a scientific calculator might be a little bit difficult, so this one you might actually have to simplify on your own um, just to make sure you guys know how to do that, right? 2 minus 5 is negative 3. You could do that on your calculator. And so if you take the absolute value of that, you get the absolute value of negative 3, which is positive 3. But let me show you how to do it on the graphing calculator. All right, let's pull that back up. So on the graphing calculator, if you go under math, number, you get this ABS, absolute values, what that stands for, ABS. And so it'll give you the absolute value symbols, and then you just type 2 minus 5 inside of it. Okay, get outside of there. And then the rest of the problem was plus 3 times negative 4, and they put the negative 4 in parentheses. Be careful, it's not times minus 4. This is a subtraction symbol. This symbol down here is the negative sign. They are different as far as the calculator is concerned and as far as we are concerned, for that matter. And so you type in the absolute value of 2 minus 5 plus 3 times negative 4, hit enter, and you get negative 9. All right, and so this answer here is negative 9. You can kind of check that. This is 3 minus 12, that's negative 9. But again, the big thing I want you to recognize is you should be able to let your calculator do the work for you. I'm totally good with your calculator doing the work for you when it comes to arithmetic. All right, now algebraic things and stuff like that, you can't use your calculator for necessarily, but we'll talk more about that later. So the next one, negative 2 times 1.89 to the third power. I want you, again, do not, you cannot distribute that negative 2 inside. You can't bring it inside because exponents come before multiplication. But it doesn't matter because if you type it in your calculator the way that you see it, negative 2, not minus 2, but negative 2, parentheses, one point eight nine close parentheses, and then this symbol, this hat symbol, caret symbol, means raised to the power, and I want to raise it to the power of 3. All right, and then you've got to come down out of there, obviously. Um, and so this is negative 2 times 1.89 to the third power. Hit enter, and you get negative 13.502538. They asked us to round to the nearest two decimal places. So five zero stops. That's two decimal places or the hundredths place. And so the final answer is negative 13.50. Yes, you need to write the zero. Why? because I'm rounding to do decimal places. If your answer was negative 13.5, that would, you don't need the zero, but it wasn't. It was negative 13.502, da, 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 da. And so the second decimal place zero, when you're rounding, tells me there was some other stuff there, but it rounded to a zero. And that's why I don't just cut it off. All right, let's do this guy. All right, there's a lot there. Seven times eight minus nine times negative one divided by four, that's a whole lot of stuff. Here, let me see if I can do this on two pages. All right. So we type in seven parentheses,
8 minus 9 parentheses negative 1. If you don't put a symbol there, it's a times, and then you need another parentheses, and then divided by 4. If you type it in just like you see it, hit enter, your calculator can handle it. 29.75. Okay, so when we do the fourth one, we're going to do 7 raised to the negative 1 half power. Now, over here, if I do 7 on my calculator and I hit the raised to the power button, it automatically, it puts it up in the exponent. But older versions of the TI don't do that, and a scientific calculator doesn't do that. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to se hit 7, the caret button, and then you're going to have to parentheses negative 1 divided by 2 close parentheses. All right, that's what you're going to have to do. And so here we're going to type it in just like it is, negative 1 divided by 2. But then we have to come down out of there, so hit the right arrow button to come down out of there. And then we'll do minus 3 to the second power, or this one has a squared button, so you can use a squared. Hit enter, and round it off to two decimal places, we end up with negative 8.62. All right, so this is just a couple practice problems. You just need to make sure that, again, pretty much the deal is, especially with a graphing calculator, because you can see what you're doing, just type it in exactly the way you see it on your paper, and you'll be fine. If you're using a scientific calculator, you have to be a little bit more careful, and if you're ever unsure, you can use parentheses. Make sure you group things together. The newer TIs kind of uh, help you in that vein a little bit, but some of the older ones... Um, you you need to, to really watch with your parentheses and stuff, okay? So if you have any questions with your calculator, obviously shoot me a text or an email, and I'll be happy to go over your individual calculator with you. All right, thanks.